Now, this is an interesting, or this might seem to be or choose, be chosen by some to be an interesting issue. But we just want to, first of all, ask the question as we've been asking it sometime when these issues have come up. How many black men were, during the time of so-called chattel slavery or overt slavery, how many black men were raped by the white supremacist slave master and, and others who were able to profit or benefit from this this crime against humanity. How many black men were raped and what is the generational effect on the black male and masculinity even in this present time? This is this is a very important issue. They say that rape is not a crime so much of sexuality, right? They say that rape uses sex as a weapon, but is it, it's a whole power trip. That's what it's, they say that rape is a power trip. They train sometime a woman or counsel that in some situations, if you if you resist or if you are afraid, then your attacker uses that fear against you, and it was, he, he feeds off of that, and, and this motivates them more to do the, this crime and to attack the woman, right, or the victim. Let's say the victim, because we're looking at now how many black men, or the fact, actually, it's a fact. We don't know the number, so we ask how many, but first of all, let's establish as a fact that black men were raped, black boys were raped, in slavery. So when we hear today about this uh, human trafficking, it really should not surprise us or anybody in the mature so-called world that there's still human trafficking. Because remember, even though there's eman there was so-called emancipation, proclamation, and all these other reconstruction and double crosses and hoodwinks and bamboozling and coming down to civil rights and all that, rah, 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 but still the crime against humanity is even much more globally worse than it ever was perhaps before. So this is all part of when we talk about Babylon, like, like this is how it connects with Scripture, with Jah, Rastafari, and with God's Word and the revelation in this time, because we're seeing these days uh, like the days of Noah. But now let's look on this aspect of the black male being raped by white supremacy, that the black male was, and, and not just raped in his culture. And, and see, this is an aspect in an area where a lot of the immature brothers and sisters, and even ourselves, took us a while, though we recognize that this must have gone on, to even address it. And it's still not addressed in all the so-called slave videos and documentaries and lectures. This is an issue that's not dealt with. They even deal with the black woman being raped. And, of course, that was a, 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 a heinous crime against humanity. And, and, and it's bred a lot of what we see going on today and a lot of the over and the hypersexuality that we're seeing among young black girls and, and, and the boys and, and, and even some of the older folks. Now that we got internet, it's like you have a camera and people will do anything in front of a camera. And now that somebody will pay for it, pay to see you do something, now it's become like a whole other market has come about by this. And now because people get paid to do certain things, they have prostituted themselves. That's what it is. They say prostitution is the oldest profession in the world. That's another lie of ha shatan, you understand, or ha shaitan. That's another lie. Because the oldest profession, you mean the uh, professional thing was prostitution in the very beginning. The very beginning was prostitution. What kind of lie against God? This is why it says in the last days that they will have great blasphemy against the Holy One, against the Most High. Prostitution is an old profession, but it's not the oldest in, in some cases, it's not even a profession. In, 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 in some cases, it is the slave occupation for a lot of subtle reasons that always are not dealt with. You understand? What, what I find so interesting is that when they talk about prostitution and, and sometimes they have these shows and other things that profile women, um, 
being prostitutes or, or escorts or, or all these kind of names that they want to call it, you know, different names today, so it's different kind of businesses. And legally speaking, a lot of that's done so it doesn't fall under the legal qualifications of things that they always, when they get to the bottom of it and they break through maybe a woman's uh, kind of that hardened resistance by so much hurt and pain, when they were able to break down some of those walls, you find that this woman probably was abused when she was young by by friends or by family or, or others, and, and she got to a certain frozen psychological state plus a certain need to survive, and then she put it together. I could do this sort of work or I could do this sort of work. And she was already dead to that. Her body, in a sense, and her mind, her conscience was dead to it. So what better work to do, you understand, than to so-called pry to a cell one's body, so forth and so on. Now, we, we kind of understand, and a lot of the research has gone on to profile what has happened to women or happens to women in sexual abuse, but what has happened to the black male, the black male being raped by white supremacy? And why are all of these so-called slave documentaries and videos, even and especially when they're done by our own people, so silent on it? Now, the first thing they may say is that, well, we don't have the, the research, and, and people don't want to speak up on it. But, but we know that it, it, that's happened because now we have these same people kidnapping little children, raping little children. So imagine that there's the same sickness in, in, in the so-called Babylonian culture that is happening today in a so-called free society without the overt slavery or overt enslavement of the lost sheep, the Beta Israel. So what happened when the Beta Israel had no voice, when the black, lost black sheep had no voice? What happened then? And... What is the consequence and the effect on black male sexuality today? This is why when the Almighty says don't judge, if you, all you Bible thumpers really did your homework and study to show yourself approved, he didn't say don't judge in that generalized sense. He said don't condemn. He said don't condemn. You know what I mean? In other words, don't pass sentence. You have to weigh and balance and investigate things. You understand? And that builds a prejudice, not a prejudice in the sense that we look at it today because of so much ignorance and, and, and intellectual pollution. You know, people say, don't be prejudiced. Everybody's prejudiced. You want to wear certain colors, go some places, do certain things, eat certain foods, so forth and so on. Everyone discriminates. We discriminate between right and wrong. You understand? So let's call it what it is. White supremacy is racism. See, see, that is the way to heal this present human condition. But, you know, as the Bible says, we would have healed Babylon. We would have healed Babylon. Many of us as black African Americans, even though we went through a lot, we still, in a sense, want to do what is good and just and fear and, 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 and desire in some way peace and justice. We would have healed Babylon. But as the scripture says, the Bible says, she would have none of it. She wouldn't have none of it. You know what I mean? It's the same way 1960s was one way, the civil rights, one way of healing Babylon. But they wouldn't have any of it because now we're back to that same old thing. We are back to where it has gone beyond just Wall Street enslaving black people in stocks and bonds. But it's now the whole world. The whole world is enslaved in the same type of stock, based on the same system. Slick Willie. You know who Slick Willie is? Willie Lynch. That's Slick Willie. He's, a sli he's still a Slick Willie. And what's a Willie? William. What's William? Bill. What's Bill? Billy Goat. He's still a Slick Satan's Goat. He, he's, still, he's, been, he's still doing Slick Willieism, still doing con games. But then, at the same time, right in our presence is an issue and a subject matter that we need to, black people and, and everyone in the world, but black people have to start this off. The lost sheep have to start this off to begin to really study and investigate the raping of the black male. Not just that the, the female being raped, our mothers, daughters, sisters, wives being raped, and our aunties too. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? Um, at least we've begun to address some of those subject matters. But what about the rape of the black male in slavery? And then let's connect it with so-called black male 
um, passivity, effeminate, effeminism, effemination, um, narcissism, bisexuality, and then over the homosexuality. So when we look at what's happening with the black male today in society, people are saying, oh, they were born that way. No, they were conditioned. They were conditioned. They were programmed that way through so much, so many subtle. See, when the Bible talks about mystery Babylon, what's a mystery? You like mystery movies, mystery books? Do you know the mystery, get behind the mystery, know who done it? You don't know who done it until you get into it, until you study it, until you watch it, until you pay attention. Then you get to know, well, who done it and what they really did and how the deed was done and all of that, and then you can solve that crime. But before that, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. Who done this? Who done this to black people? When a lot of black people say today that this is not the way of black people, what you see going on, the prostitution, the whoredism, the homosexuality, the broken families, um, the baby mama dramas, the deadbeat baby black father drama. This is not the way God Jah created us. Something happened. We were what? Born this way. We was born into a society that was already this way. And as a young child will begin to shape its paradigms based on what it observes, what it sees, and its own way of judging things for themselves, so did many of us and so did our people. And now we find people, you know, like one saying they were born gay, you know, or born homosexual. Now, for European people, there's a different paradigm, cultural, social paradigm. But now for black people, we need to look at this very carefully. And this is why we want to begin off this issue and put this issue out there. You understand? About how white supremacy raped the black male in slavery. The black male was raped in slavery by white supremacy. You know, we can juggle the title, do a survey focus group and see which one is, is a more better title. You know, you can download this, put this up at your site and tweak the title a little bit differently if you feel it better articulates what we're speaking about. But the main thing is the subject matter. Now, France is the only one that we had from a a, a, and as they would call it, an educated, uh, collegiate, uh, intellectual, a uh, scientific perspective, have even attempted to address this particular issue has been Dr. Frances Cress Welsey in her outstanding book, The ISIS Papers, The Keys to the Colors. She has a, a whole chapter, I think it's chapter six, and chapter six of her book actually um, – lays out both a scientific, a clinical, a psychological background, tracing it from slavery to this very day. I mean, this is a, this is a very important work, um, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing's book. I heard that they say certain ones had like a, 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 a hit out on her because this book was so dangerous and is so dangerous to the very foundation, the cornerstone foundation of this evil, mystery Babylon, biblically, or white supremacy from a more historical, cultural view, or you can call it racism, that it needs to be, you know, it needs to be known. And, and this is why we put that book out there to even begin, because she, she begins to even address some of the background, and she brought this out before there was this flood. There's a flood now of this going on, where you hear people saying, well, I was born this way. No, we were conditioned this way. Now, imagine the, the, the baby mamas, right, when they talk about welfare and all this to, to, to get the black woman the guilt trip and everything, right? Suppose the black woman say, I was born this way. Suppose the so-called so -called deadbeat baby father said, I was born this way. What would they say? They said, no, you're just lazy. You don't want to get a job. You don't want to do this. You won't have too much children. You have no discipline. You're unchristian and all these other blah, 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 blah they want to throw on them. Now, if that is right to do with black people, then why is it not right to do with the homosexual, so-called homosexual? They can say today that they were born this way, and the fact is there's no clinical scientific research that really says that this is part of the so-called jaw-created way. But what the science is saying is that from 
40 or 50 or more years of conditioning and from other, um, uh, what do they say, predisposed. Black people have a certain predisposition, all right? They have a, excuse me, they have a predisposition <clears throat> to certain things because there's certain things in our background, but these things have been hidden from us, like the effects or the defects of the rape, the physical rape of the black male. Now, was that love? Was that homosexual relations? Uh, if, this, if the slave master, now, we know that they had sex with young children, that they abused these people, they beat them, they killed them. So what was it for the same sort of mentality that goes around kidnapping, like the Jeffrey Dahmers of the world, that goes around kidnapping and sexually, like Jeffrey Dahmer is actually a very good example. You see, where if Jeffrey Dahmer had lived back in over chattel slavery, we would have never known about what he was doing. He would have probably been considered a good businessman. You know, he had a good farm, good plantations, had a profit, you know, created a profit. All the other stuff they would have buried because there was no social consciousness. You know, like Stokely Carmichael said about MLK, that MLK, Martin Luther King Jr., his idea and plan was good, like theoretically on the paper, that we will shame white supremacy and, and shame them into a conscientiousness about what they're doing to black people, you know, and, 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 and show it to them. And when they see what they're doing, they will say, oh, my God, what have I done? But then Stokely Carmichael said, see, where the, where, where the fatal error to that theory was, that is dependent on white supremacy having a conscience having a conscience. Now, many people think that things have changed and that white supremacy does have a conscience. No, all white supremacy knew is that they had to make some sort of change and over seeming change. You have to remember, they're into show business. They're into seeing as believing is what they believe in their world. So if they show you these things, if they have a couple of tokens and so forth and so on, they put it in the media, they write about it, they have this as a popular gossip, people will believe that things have gotten better. And now with the downturn of the economy, all because of Wall Street. Because, see, Wall Street became Wall Street because of slavery. See, and we have to understand that the same things that happen to black folks in uh, another way, you understand, is happening to everyone. I mean, you hear white people saying they feel like slaves. Can you imagine this? Can you imagine this? White folks saying they feel like, you know, like I'm talking about these people protesting here and there. They refuse to be enslaved because they begin to see the connection between the stocks and the bonds of the slave ship and Wall Street with their own being in a technological systemic bondage in this present time. In a sense, they're being raped too. They're being raped of their creativeness. They're being raped of their soul, of their, of their conscientiousness, of, 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 of their, of their uh, common wealth in this creation by a so-called 1%, you know? So rape is a crime. See, rape is a crime. But what we haven't explored, black folks, and black men in particular, you understand, we haven't explored the fact that the black male and black boys and even men were raped in and during slavery. And this is what sets the background, the context, and the paradigm for what we're seeing today. Now, the next point we want to talk about, if y'all wills, is why we shouldn't sing the song, that song, Amazing Grace. Why that song is a, is a, Ku, Klux, a Ku, Klux, Ku Klux Klan song, that's a Nazi song, that's a white supremacist song. And if you understand the true context of Amazing Grace background, I know it sounds religious and so forth and so on. See, that's what it talks about in the Bible, that if it was possible, they would deceive the very elect. If it were possible, you understand, there's many people who have been singing that song for years and thinking it's a holy moly Christian song and really have looked at it in the proper context of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and say, wait, this song, Amazing Grace, a slave master, is looking at these dumbass niggas, you understand, these niggers, and saying, wow, I could be just like them because he recognized they're human beings. But except for this mental dis-ease of white people who said that they were inferior by having pale 
and, and non-melanated skin and these black people being black and beautiful, besides for that, I would have been just like these Negroes. And now he makes his amazing grace. He knew he was a wretch. He was a wretch because he was a criminal. He was, he was, he was committing crimes against humanity. The, 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 I was about to say the nigger, but I don't want you to think he was black, but the, the, the white guy. The, the, the slave ship master who wrote that song. And that song should not be sung. That song should not be sung. It should, it should be rewritten, maybe from a black person's perspective, you understand, or from black people's perspective, but we should not sing that slave ship master song, especially since that song is, is one of the foundation songs of white supremacy, when you think about it. Think about it for a moment. They allowed us to sing this because if, if we fell for that, then we would fall for almost anything. 